The following is a presentation of Manatee Schools Television in association with TV production teachers and students. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Mike Van Zirk's Field. Newly renovated, glistening, this is the MSTV Game of the Week presentation brought to you by Manatee Schools Television. This game will be played from the Palmetto Tigers versus the Bay Shore Bruins. I am Frederick Stewart, the People's Champ and your color commentator, and I am joined by the play-by-play -play master, Mr. Chris Conboy. How you doing? We should have a good one tonight. Um, I know... Uh when you pull up to, to uh, Mike Van Zirk Field, a lot of players look at that flag out there in left field and see which way the wind's blowing, and it's blowing straight out tonight. It's not a very biggish field, so um, hitters are smiling. Pitchers know they got to keep the ball down and change speeds tonight or you'll have some balls flying out of the park. Oh, yeah, and as they're smiling, I'm smiling for a different reason because I hear here at Palmetto, they got some of the best crinkle cut fries in the business. So <laughs> we're going to be getting to that, and we're going to be bringing this game to you shortly as we get underway. Yeah, we got Hunter Wingate, uh, starting pitcher for Palmetto tonight. He's a junior and uh, big big number 15 out there getting loose with his battery mate, Christian Kretzer. And we're ready to go. And um, Hunter Wingate's grandfather, Mike McCann, was a longtime administrator in Manatee County Schools, so people, anybody in the school district might remember him. Yeah, definitely so. You know, one thing about Mr. Conboy is that he has, especially here, since he works here, this is going to be a very history Yeah, some, some of these guys I've known from Little League and coached a lot of them in JV in the past and uh, – have a pretty good knowledge of the Palmetto guys. We try to learn all the teams, but I'll, I'll know them a little better. Uh, it's our first look at shortstop Trey Lawrence, uh, the stud shortstop for Palmetto, who's signed with uh, Missouri, an SEC signee, and will, I would think will probably get drafted. Uh, his dad is a special assistant to the GM at the, with the uh, Milwaukee Brewers, I believe, and uh, his dad's been in pro ball. He's been around pro ball a lot, and it usually shows. Uh, when he gets on the hill, he'll touch 90, 91. And uh, he's also having a good year at the plate this year. Mm -hmm. A lot Hit, of talent. 300. And Let's go another ball. 3-1 count here. 3-1. Um, J. Roe Leon leading off. Yes, Bruins. I think they told us it's Hyro, which Hiro. I may have called him J-Row last game, but I think uh, our our crack PA announcer, uh, John Kretzer, got that, went down and got the actual pronunciations, and we were told by their staff that it's Hyro. Shout to John. Yeah, so we'll uh, we'll go with Hyro if we can remember that. 3-2, <laughs> the first uh, batter here. Popped up out of play. That's the first of many balls going out on the street probably here at uh, Mike Van Zirk Field, which – I think of it as kind of like the high school version of uh, Wrigley Field because it's mm -hmm. got the street right here behind you. And yeah. uh, it's a little bit small, friendly confines. Um, really tough on the right fielder and the right side of the infield this time of night, though. Starting at 630 makes it really tough. You can even see the first base coach and the umpire cannot see. He misses up for ball four. And, and Leon leads off with a walk. And the Bruins have their leadoff hitter aboard, which we've talked about before. And it's 71% of the time. If you walk a leadoff hitter, he's going to score. So that's not a good start. Never, never want to <coughs> walk off. Uh, never want to start inning walking off anyone. Yep. You're just giving teams free opportunities to get on base and to get points. Wingate's got to get ahead in the count here. And he falls behind again. Coming up, a face we've seen before, number 12, Tucker Pope. Tucker Pope on deck. Is it? Looks like 13 on deck. The Pope or looking Pope to make a miracle. Now. Okay, yeah. All right, my bad. Wingate throws over to first. Cam Banta playing first tonight. Uh, he's been kind of hobbled by some injuries this year and uh, actually has played a little less this year than he did his sophomore, junior year. It's a good bat to have in a lineup, though. Um, 
on paper, and there's a pitch for a strike. On paper, Palmetto, you know, should should be able to handle Bayshore when you look at the records and the stats. But, um, uh, you know, it's not played on paper. And if you let a team hang around, anything can happen. Plus, Palmetto has a lot of uh, different guys in the lineup tonight. They're, they're trying to get some guys some 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 action before they get into district uh, tournament. And I think Coach DeHaan figured this was a good game to do that. So we've got Clayton Williams playing third and Cam Bantz at first. Jaden Peters is at second, who's playing a lot of outfield this year. A lot of normal starters are not starting tonight for Palmetto. Yeah, it's definitely a great idea by Coach because when you start to get deeper into any sport, into the playoffs, you know, it's bigger than just your stars shining. you got to have guys who are able to, to take up the helm when the stars aren't able to shine and help you secure those tough games and those tough victories because it only gets harder as you get deeper into the playoffs. Yeah, and you never know when someone's going to go down. And if you go through a whole season, you don't get your backups any reps, you don't get many at-bats, you know, innings pitched, uh, you know, you don't develop any depth. Mm-hmm. So Wingate, Wingate misses up. Going to be a full count here. Second full count, high pitch count already. He's gone full on both both batters. Wingate isn't normally the starter as a pitcher, is he? Uh, I don't think he started any games yet this year. He did in JV um, and in the past. I, I think he's thrown. He's started in other games. Okay. Oh, close. Good move over to first. Close play over there. The Tigers really keeping the Bruins honest as this is their third time in just this pitch alone they've thrown to the first. Wingate hoping for double play ball here if he can get a ground ball. There's a strike him out and throw him out right there at second. Great throw by Kretzer. Nice catch and tag uh, by Jay. An athletic play by the second baseman getting in and catching the ball and getting the tag down all in one motion. Great throw by Kretzer on the swing through. That can be difficult when a guy swings to pop out of that squat and uh, try to throw down the second when there's a bat swinging in front of you. But that's an excellent job there. And that's part of why Hunter was holding him on like that. So that extra half step, he might have kept him closer to base is the difference between stealing it and being out. So, Next up at back, number 13, Diego Vijayas. And, yeah, you're 100% correct. Keeping him honest, keeping him, not allowing him to lead out is one of the reasons why they were able to secure that double play. Yep. And Bayshore is going to probably regret that, I think. I run themselves off an inning with that. But 3-2, I guess, you know, you're thinking the guy might put it in play or it might be ball four. It's a good time to run 3-2. and two. I can understand that. And obviously, leadoff hitter Leon has some speed or he wouldn't be batting leadoff. But Kretzer made a great throw, and that should dissuade Bejor from running anymore. There's a good pitch. Oh, I guess it – oh, yes, it was a strike. A little delayed reaction there. It looked like a strike to me. And then he had to think about it a little bit and decided well, he agreed with me. That was nice of him. You know, it's real hot. The, the heat can have you seeing things out there <laughs> in Florida. <clears throat> One, two count. It's ball breaking thrown. ball up. He, he's leaving that breaking ball up. He's just not as – Jimmy Little will tell him when he goes to the sideline, or he's probably yelling it now, knowing Jimmy, you got to do the work out front. He's kind of releasing the ball up a little too high and he's got to hang on to it and reach out to the plate and finish down and drop that curveball in there. There's a foul ball. Staying alive. The Bruins have had some high pitch counts just starting off. Um, and I think Vizegas is pitching tonight for, for Bayshore. Uh, Diego I believe so. Vizegas, I believe. Is that, so that's the lineup we got. We'll see if when he gets out there if he's still actually pitching. Sometimes they'll cross you up and give the umpire something different. Foul ball back in the streets. There's another one for the fans back on uh, 14th and 17th. <laughs> Bring your glove to your porch. Yep. You never know. I've seen many cars get banged on the on the <laughs> roof as they drive by here over the years. Just don't hit the blue Honda out there. Wingate to the plate, bro. Good breaking ball down and away. That was a good pitch, like a good slider. And wow. The, the Jagger Tigers swung over the top. The Tigers able to escape this one after walking the first man. Three up, three down. Yeah, he settled down late. Like you said, his first start, he was probably a little amped up, and those first two batters went 3 2 on him, then looked much more comfortable after that. Um, I'm sure he'll call out their next inning and, and just attack the zone. Definitely so. And we're going to get a chance to see this uh, secondary Palmetto Tiger offense and see what they can do out here. 
You know, they're led by some some great coaches, a lot of major league experience from the head coach all the way down to the assistants, and a lot of high-level guys here. So I'm excited to see what they're going to do next. Yeah, Corey DeHaan, um, first-year coach at Palmetto. Uh, he's done a really good job. Uh, played in the majors, um, played the minors for a long time. Uh, he's done a lot of travel ball. He has a, a facility called Hit Lab that uh, is a great place to, to hit. And he has a hit tracks machine in there, which – the kids can go in there, like my younger son even hits, and every pitch you can see what your exit velocity was and where the ball would have went on the screen on a computer. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty cool when you, rather than just taking batting practice and not really knowing where the ball's going, you're knowing which ones you're really barreling up. And, um, and it's crazy, you know, speaking on that point of how much better the athletes are able to become now. Yeah. You know, a guy maybe who was – 10, 15 years ago, just a good guy can become a great guy just with the new tools that we have. If they have the work ethic. Yes. They still have to have that work ethic. But if there are a lot more opportunities in training and weightlifting and knowing how to pitch and hit that can help you. But the coaching staff he's put together over there, um, you know, he, he retained Jimmy Little, who's uh, been here through, I think, the last three uh, head coaches. He's a former Manatee High pitcher at Hillsborough Community College, former Lancer. Um I remember Jimmy in high school. He's a little, little younger than me. I don't want to date him, but uh, I think he's uh, my sister's age when he pitched at Manatee. Uh, but he does a great job as a pitching coach. And then, of course, Dave Motes, the bench coach, uh, was the head coach of the Lakewood Ranch State Championship team in the early 2000s. And he was an assistant on the Mike Van Zirk team that won the state championship at Palmetto back in 94 or 95 in the mid-90s. And we got my man, number two, Jaden Peters, two step in his way. Yes, Jaden Peters. Into the batter's box. Jaden Peters is uh, he's having a great year. Um, first pitch high. Really good. Uh, talk, speaking about work ethic, really good work ethic. Um, really hits the weight room hard. Just to see how much he's grown since his freshman year. Um, when I first met him, I remember his dad didn't know if he'd be, ever be big enough to play high school baseball, and then now he bats first, second, or third, and, you know, he's hitting uh, 358. he He's got seven RBIs for the year, you know, hitting at the top of the order and, uh, as a junior, and expect big things for him next year. I know uh, New College was here early in the year. Look at him. There's a base hit up the middle. Uh, New College was here earlier in the year, really liked his bat. Coach Rich Glass, the recruiting coordinator at New College, used to be the uh, head coach here at Palmetto and uh, and actually still teaches at Palmetto. So uh, he gets out to some Palmetto games and sees these guys play. And we got Baden Wallace coming up, number eight here. Not a lot of at-bats this year. He's been primarily a pitcher. This is one of those things where Coach DeHaan is trying to develop some depth. He's a senior. Uh, he's athletic enough to play the outfield. He's out in center field tonight, and, and he puts down a bunt. And that's a good bunt. Moves him over, gets his job done. Moves the runner over into scoring position. And Peters showing the little blazing speed there. Yeah, Jaden runs well. Um, he's one of uh, one of two Palmetto Tigers that uh, do part-time work at Moccasin Wild Golf Club. Got to get that that plug in there. Got to get the plug in for uh, Noah Zelnick at the Mock. Um, Jaden and Christian Kretzer, the catcher, we saw throw out the runner last inning, do an excellent job fishing those range balls out of the lake, the aqua range balls. and <laughs> That's where he gets all his strength from, not the weight room. <laughs> it's fishing the balls out of the lake. Trey Lawrence, the batter now, no the D1 he. signee, out in front of a breaking ball and over the top of it. He's going to stay back. He was lunging a little bit at that one. And he makes an adjustment, but he's still out in front a little and hits the ball, smokes it foul, and it'll go 0-2. Trey's an excellent shortstop defensively, great pitcher, got a tremendous arm, uh, great kid, good student. So many of these Palmetto kids are really good students. Um, I think in the last three years, uh, I was looking today, I believe it's 16 baseball players from Palmetto have gotten 100% uh, bright future scholarships by oh, earning wow. their ACE diploma. That's amazing. They're in the uh, Cambridge program, and you get a, a full scholarship to any state school if they go to SCF or – Florida, Florida State, any of the state schools, it's 100% tuition. There's a base hit. Great ball in the middle. And that looks like it's going to bring Mr. Peters, Peters. home. Yep. Paul Meadow, the Tigers, getting the first scratch. 
That was a good adjustment by Trey with two outs. He, he didn't hit it all that hard, but you get two outs, he had to go after that breaking ball and get a piece of it. But, but you have the ace program at Palmetto developing uh, like Louis Garrido, who we had in the press box at the Bayshore game as an ace diploma graduate. And people don't realize that in baseball, there are no full scholarships, essentially. Division One has 35 players on their team. Another five are redshirted, so there's 40, 45 guys in the program. And they only have 11 scholarships. So they got to find guys that can get money other ways. And one of the ways you can do it, and there goes Trey Lawrence, and he's going to be safe. And he leads the team in stolen bases. He can run a little bit too, which is amazing in itself because as a freshman, he was extremely slow. Oh, wow. I hope he doesn't mind me saying that. But another, another, another case of a kid working hard, and now actually his speed is an advantage for him, hitting at the top of the order. And I remember his first 60 he ran here in that high grass out in left field. He wasn't very happy with the time. Oh, he's out in front and pops that up. Aiden Collins. Oh. And a little trouble catch. out there, but Pope made the catch. Collins, another one of the great students, has been in contact with some uh, Ivy League schools Yeah. Uh, for baseball. His brother is a pitcher at Johns Hopkins right now pitching in college so yeah very important you know the athletes uh, especially at any level take advantage of the academic scholarships that are out there because unfortunately the truth is a lot of guys they aren't going to go and that one's a nice hit what oh, a nice great catch, catch by Jayden the center judge. fielder making it look easy Jaden judge uh tremendous football player that was a great play there look at the sun too i mean that ball was hit he was looking right into the sun that was a tough ball to track, and it was carrying. It was hit hard. Yeah, there's a lot of um, – as we. oh, my goodness, the Bruins have 20 points. <laughs> <laughs> the Bruins have scored 20 points on defense. This is insane. But uh, Cam we Banta hit that ball right on the nose. Like I said, he, he hasn't been playing. He's had uh, some ankle injuries, and he really hadn't played much. But he – as I mean, from his sophomore year and his junior year, he was uh, a good RBI guy, uh, pretty good bat in the lineup for Palmetto. So – I expect him to kind of come around as we head into the districts and end the second half of the season here. We spoke target. about this last time when the Bruins played Southeast, but although they, they their record may not show it, this is a new program, but they have a lot of talent on the team. Yeah. A lot of talent that's coming up. Guys like Judge, they had the – I forgot his name, but the, the bigger kid who had the, the Malik. wardrobe mouth. Malik, Malik yes. Williams. And he was hitting really well. The big man, yeah. The big man. We'll see him in a little bit. Yeah, Coach Rupp's done a great job. Uh, took over the program uh, three years ago. I don't think they had they had no JV. They could barely get ten guys for a varsity. Uh, as a matter of fact, somebody down in the stands tonight said, "I didn't even know Bayshore had a baseball team," because the last couple of years they, you know, they they struggled to put together a program. But now they have a full JV squad. The coaches have done a good job. They got these kids believing in themselves a little bit, and uh, they're doing a good job teaching fundamentals. It's a I told Coach DeHaan uh, the other day when I was talking to him that, you know, they're much improved from the last couple of years, Bayshore. This is yeah. not the Bayshore from three years ago. Great job by Coach. And so we're coming into the top of the second. Paul Meadow scoring one off of that up-the-middle base hit. And the Bruins looking to find their rhythm as they went three up and three down. Off the double play, the amazing double play. Strike him out, throw him out. And it looks like we're going to have number 27, Yampier Lorenzo. Yampier Lorenzo. We Leading saw him the pitch the last time, I think. He pitched uh, against Southeast. Yes, I believe so. Yes. Yeah, I think he started and then went and played right field, I believe. Uh, had a couple of hits in that game, too, if I, if I remember. Mm -hmm. Big cut Swing there. and a miss. That's going to be... First strike. And one of the things about this Bruins team is that they're definitely resilient. They battled with Southeast when we were out there. So they're not going out, you know, without a fight. They're, they aren't laying down any team. Yeah, Lorenzo's hitting 385 this year, and there's a base hit to right field. There. Well, they might try to throw him out at first. They might have a play there. Oh, he thought about it. And Donnie Sanchez charging hard like he was thinking about throwing him out. But and Donnie, another kid, man, when uh, as a freshman uh, – uh, you know, this, the way he's grown and developed as a player over the three, four years, three years he's been here, it's amazing. So it's one of the neat things about being uh, being in high school coaching is to see kids come in at 14 and then see what they turn out at 18 or 
you know, 17 years old when they're graduating. This is uh, Jaden Judge, number three up. Extremely poised on Star that first Star running one. back for the uh, Bruins. Very nice frame. Big kid. He's a three-time qualifier in weightlifting. Did not lift this year. Decided to run track and play baseball instead. He, he hadn't played baseball in four years. He was, He's well-traveled. He started at Manatee, and he went to Sarasota, and now he's at Bayshore. That is a, a product of the new system, the way the school system works now. <laughs> the new age. Yep. Nice kid. I coached him for a spring down at Sarasota. Loves, loves to compete. He's a competitor. He really loves to compete. And the first baseman will be advanced to second base as the uh, that wild, wild pitch. pitch. Yeah. Swing at that one. That will give us a one-two count. So the Bruins have a man in the scoring position with nobody out here. Definitely a good chance for them to be able to even it up. As the judge looks down the barrel. Wingate looks back, throws. Oh, good pitch. Oh, that, that's a scary play as a, as a coach because of that sun where Cam Banta was catching that throw. That's coming right out of the sun from the catcher. Yeah. Extremely and, hard to see with the sun in your eyes. Yeah. Next up, we got number four, Deshaun Judge. Deshaun Judge, the little brother of Jaden. A freshman just now yep. coming in, getting his feet wet. Also a football player, did a couple of good athletes during a row. Two sport guys. Maybe three. I know J J Jaden's a three sport. He runs track as well. Wingate gets ahead. He's he's lit, left a few balls up more than I think than he's like would like, and I think that's been his issue so far. That his struggles have been leaving it up. It looked like, but he's also throwing a couple of really good breaking balls for strikeouts when he's got two strikes on guys. So if he can get to two, uh, he's had that good breaking ball low and away. That's. Another one out on the street. Don't hit that blue Honda, right? Don't hit the blue Honda. <laughs> you didn't park over there, did you? I don't want to say where I parked. Right, just case the balls the are listening. Ball, if you're smart, you go where I did out there. I'm only getting hit if someone hits a 400-foot home run. Well, then that's a souvenir. Yeah. Yeah. When you when you drive a Lamborghini, you gotta be careful when you park <laughs> it. So. Put the Lambo out there. Put the Lambo out there. You know, I call the Honda <laughs> the Bentley sometimes. You know? He's got two strikes on Judge. Oh, he struck him out looking fastball. I think he was thinking breaking ball, and he just surprised him with a fastball. He threw the breaking ball the last two times. Yep. I started to say he struck him out, and I wasn't sure if the umpire was going to call it. I had to wait again for that delay. So Yeah. <laughs> Next up, number six, Adrian Velez. And uh, going back to a point you stated earlier, you know, as you said, it, it's very interesting to see freshmen come in because this time during high school, those four years are so transformative for players. You know, they're getting bigger, stronger, they're getting Absolutely. older, a little chest hair. Yep. And then also with conditioning and, and strength, you can yeah. turn a guy from a zero to a, a hero. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. You get the uh, the man muscles uh, as they start to mature, and it's it's, it's really interesting. Um Matt Navarro, uh, another kid. He's play, he's not playing tonight, but he's a normal third baseman for Palmetto. Uh, I was telling him today when I saw him or yesterday, uh, congratulating him on the season he's having. You know, just watching him develop. And I, I remember when he oh good block by Kretzer, keep the runner at second there. Ball was in the dirt. Nice job blocking it with the chest protector. Kept it right in front of him. And the Bruins only have one out with a man on second. Nice two, isn't it? There's two. Both judges. Struck out. Yep, so both two judges. Outs, two yeah. outs now, excuse me. Yeah. Let's, yeah. The stadium scoreboard is accurate because we have a great crack staff doing the uh, announcing in the stadium scoreboard clock here. So. The two outs for Wingate. <laughs> Facing Yadrian Velez here. Foul ball. Foul that back. Foul back two back strikes now. I believe it's two and two. Yeah, we mentioned David Motes. Uh, his grandson is a normal starter at Palmetto. who's not starting today, too. Jackson Motes. Another senior, another ACE diploma recipient. 
His dad was Jeff Motes, who I coached at Manatee back in the mid early 90s. I don't want to tell how old he is because I see him down there. I don't want to. <laughs> but uh, strike three, no. Ooh. Crowd giving some feedback on that one. We're going to have a full count here, 3-2. Yeah, that was that was pretty close to take with two strikes. I don't, you can't be taking that pitch with two strikes. But I, I throw the same spot again. I don't think he's going to call it a ball twice in a row. Throws and that one ball slap. Is short. All right, got through. Pops up and that's going to bring that's home a runner. Run. That's and a good job of hitting right there. The Bruins are going to even up the score here, one one. Yep, one one. With that base hit. By Valdez. Jataris Handy coming up. Playing left field tonight. We saw him at first base last time we put, they played. That we did. Both teams bringing something new to the game this time. Yep. Two outs are on first. Wingate works from the stretch. Ball was up. And I think he Handy helped him out a little bit, swinging a fastball that was up. Yeah, that one would have went 400. That would have that would have hit that Lambo out there. Again, the Tigers looking over the first baseman. Throw. So, yep, Velez goes back, standing up that time. Really doesn't have that big of a lead. I think it was just kind of a toe. Well, he's getting a little more of a lead now. Maybe he is going. You get two strikes now. Fastball for a strike there up in the zone. Wingate got the call. See if he can finish him here with that. If he'll go to that breaking ball down and away that he's got the other guys on. And some of these throwovers are called by the uh, coaches. Uh, okay. They have a microphone to the catcher. Or, you know, they can call, send a signal in. They have a signal that the catcher will give instead of giving one or two for fastball, curveball, whatever. They'll give a, a shake or a flip to tell the pitcher to throw over if the coach feels like he might be running. There it was. The breaking ball was down. Nice pick by uh, Kretzer and tags him for the out. And it's a tie game, 1-1. Yes, There's, and the Tigers are going to go to the bottom of the second with a 1-1 game. Escape this one, only allowing for one. The pitching has um, been so-so, but... It, I feel like the var the variance of it, the really high highs and the really low lows have been kind of tripping up some of these hitters because I've been seeing a lot of guys chasing. Yeah, it seems like they have chased a lot of bad pitches. Um, yeah. But neither offense really has done much. I mean, it, there was two singles up the middle for Palmetto and one single up the middle for Bayshore. And yeah. The other one was a – There have been some great defensive plays, though. Yeah, yep. So defense has not been an issue. Offense so far has been so-so. But that's what you come to expect. The game's early right now. You know, just coming out, just getting a feel for each other. These are new guys on the Paul Meadows roster, guys who usually don't play as much or get out there. So it's something to expect. There's a lot of younger guys and, and guys who are just trying to develop their skill and their talent. And, you know, uh, we I mentioned how, you know, on paper that uh, Paul Meadow would probably have the advantage, but – when it comes to baseball, it all matters. Is the only thing that matters is that guy on the bump. When you face a good pitcher, uh, they, they equalize games. Um, so that can always get tied up. So, and that's what we've seen here tonight. Uh, you know, he's just been. Yeah. Vajegas has been uh, throwing strikes for the most part and keeping him in the game. And leading off the bottom of the second, number nine, Christian Kretzer. Christian Kretzer, another sensational ball retrie uh, range ball retriever at the Moxonwall <laughs> Golf Club. He was a lot in front on that one. Some would say Hall of Fame. He's he, he might be in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> he doesn't he doesn't have his jacket yet, but he's we're, we're, he's been he's been measured for it. Yeah, you don't get a jacket, you get a net. <laughs> First one was a strike. That's up. 1-1 one, one count so far. Yep. 
And Christian hasn't had an opportunity to play every day. It's tough to hit when you're not playing every day to get into a groove. Some of these guys that we're seeing for the first time, you know, they, they, they don't have get a lot of in-game at-bats. It's hard to get rhythm. and Yeah, it, it's hard. You know, batting in a cage, batting on a field by yourself in comparison to in-game. We have another ball there, a 3-1 count. Yeah, it looked like it was. It might it's have a been lot down different than the, when you get on um, that field. The catcher kind of questioned the call, but when you turn your glove over that way, you're never going to get a call. You need to go down with your thumb underneath the glove. Your thumb has to be down, and you have to catch the ball coming up. When you do this, almost 99.99%, the umpire is going to call the ball. And you'll never get a call when you turn your glove over. So I know this doesn't apply to us at this level, but. I've heard rumors about the the major league level, and they talk about the new AI technology that will essentially eliminate the ability to frame. How do you feel about that? Yeah, uh, well, I've been to minor league games, and Marauders use it, and it's pretty good. You just hate a game to like turn on a bad call, you know. With it, you know, when it helps you, you like it, but you yeah. know, it just as many times it hurts you. So they call it a ball or a strike, and they just tap their helmet, and the umpire taps the helmet, and they tell them right away whether it was really a ball or a strike. And uh, it's really not bad. I thought I would hate it. You know, I'm kind of a tra traditionalist. I don't want to see robots take over the world. Yeah. But uh, but I, I also don't want to see games lost because some guy's got a bad strike zone, you know. Mm. Or What do you think catchers can do now to differentiate themselves? Because, you know, framing was a, a big part of well, gamesmanship. Yeah, but, it, I mean, and at this level it's more of that, catch and throw. Yeah. You know, if you, you, can, you, can still, you can still pick better, block better, throw better. So that, that will separate the catchers. Um, the framing, the framing may not be as important if they go to that, but it's very important now. As I, there's strikes are stolen at a very high rate. Hmm. We got a, a courtesy runner in for Kretzer. I think that is Shawpacher. Chance Shawpacher, whose dad Scott Shawpacher played at Southeast. That is a. Uh, well-known, uh, we call that a strike. Okay, well-known name in the uh, Mattie County sports world, Shawpockers. Chance is a great kid. He coaches uh, 11 and 12U baseball. The the kids really like him. Uh, he's a positive kid. Pops does a great foul. job coaching out there. This is uh, Clayton Williams, I think. Right? No, is that who's up now? That's number five. Number five, Aiden Collins. Eight, eight. No, that's not. That's not five. I can't see oh, them. My bad. Excuse me. I believe that's. Yeah, it's number six, Clayton Williams. Six, Excuse yeah. me. Ball's low. Shawpocker is going to score on that throw. He can run. The kick can fly. He has third stolen easy, and then when throwing into left field, that was. And that, that's what's going to hurt Bayshore in this game more than anything is, is just not taking care of the ball. We saw that in the Southeast game. Both mm -hmm. teams doing that a little bit. Mm hmm. And the game's already hard enough. You don't want right. to give your opponent extra extra chances. And, at yeah, scoring. Palmetto has a lot of good bats, and and you know, and you give them extra outs. That's that's rough. And, and a lot of fast guys too. Yeah, yeah. Palmetto has a lot of stolen bases, and a lot of heads up plays as well. Guys keeping their head on the swivel, ready to yeah. run at all times. Yeah, you saw Shawpocker did not hesitate uh, when he slid in. He popped right up and was going. I mean, I'm sure coach was yelling, but that still takes a little bit of. Uh, a little bit of baseball IQ to be ready to do that with no, yep. no hesitation. I think this is Sanchez now. Donathan Sanchez. Now, normally his family's out in left field uh, cooking tacos and playing music. Are, are they out there tonight? Yeah. Yep, there they are. We have um, our, <clears throat> our other two guests here in the booth with us letting us know that they are here. <laughs> the tacos are here. They don't sell them either. If you, that's where you should go. You know, if you want to save money, just go out there and tell them Coach Conboy said they'd give you a taco <laughs> in between innings. They'll get you one. They're good too. He'll have a whole. He has a whole uh, flat grill set up out there, and he's grilling meat and got tortillas and all the side side toppings. And yeah, swing and a miss on a breaking ball. Though. That's Vizegas coming back after the guy scores on an error to get the next two guys to strike out. That's big. That's that shows me a lot of he's got he's got a lot of uh, competitiveness that uh, he didn't let that get him down. Some pitchers when they fall, when a defense lets them down behind them they you know they lose focus and 
get flustered. You're 100 percent correct. I mean, like I said last time, we saw these team, we saw them battle Southeast and battle back. They didn't, they didn't lay down, they didn't complain. They came out and, and won the game. We got Talon Sisk hitting here the DH, and he does not have a lot of at bats this year. His uh, older brother Hunter is normally the starting first baseman. He's not playing tonight. Talon and Hunter, products of the Buffalo Creek Little League that my kids played in and I coached in for years. So I, I coached these guys back in Little League. Their dad, Doug Sisk, is a, a, a teacher at the uh, Juvenile Detention Center. Works for the school board assigned to the JDC. Wow. And that's one thing I love about doing this and, and learning. I feel like I learned so much more about Manatee County and history. <laughs> it's a little history lesson. Everyone's so interconnected here. Yes, there are, for people that have been here for 40-plus years, there's a lot of interconnections. Especially if you played sports. Yeah. 3-2 count, full count. That one's going four. on the ground, so he's going to be taking a walk down Broadway. Yeah. I thought it was low. The, the, the sketcher's not helping his pitcher out any uh, by doing that or looking back after a pitch. And, you know, the umpires don't like that. So. Again, we talk about this all the time. The umpire is going to give his call, and it's final. There's nothing you can do to change his mind. Yeah. Jaden Peters up, playing second base tonight. The Bruins throwing the first base, keeping him honest. Jaden, the leading hitter for Palmetto. Hitting 358 coming into the game, and he's one for one tonight. There's a back pick throw. Nice throw. Had a chance. He had a big lead out there. Secondary lead. By Sisk with two outs. And you said New College was actually looking at Jaden. Is that what you said? New College was here? Yeah, New College was here, and uh, I know Coach Glass said he liked his bat. And there's another one. There's a base hit in the left field. Sisk is going to go around from first to third, running on it with two outs. And Jaden Peters is two for two. So he's raising that batting average up. Piece by piece. Definitely a lot of talent out there at New College. I, I uh, interact with them a lot, and they're building up a, a good program out there. Yeah, Mario Jimenez, the uh, AD and baseball coach, does a great job. Mm -hmm. um, former director of baseball at Inspiration Academy, mm -hmm. where I also coached. There, is, there hasn't been any place, many places I haven't been. <laughs> if there was some baseball there, it's around football, somewhere. Or football. Or football. Either or. We don't discriminate. Yeah. And that base is stolen. And as you said, even the even the backups, are, they're sicking their claws in and, and digging in deep and getting these bases. Well, Jaden Jaden's a regular player. He just normally plays the outfield. Uh, tonight he's playing second. There's a foul ball. That one's popped up. And that is, oh, we overran it. It's one of those things that's a tough play for the catcher, but you got to understand the foul ball to the catcher will always come back towards the field. Mm. So you don't want to run to where the ball is when it's at its apex. It'll end up 10 feet behind you. You want to stay, stay in, on the field side of the ball because of the spin, it will always come back, especially when the wind is blowing out like it is tonight. There's a little blooper to right. That's going to be trouble. That's dropping. It's a base hit for Wallace. Oh, he, he should have just kept going because And that's going to bring in two, two. runs. Two runs single for Baden Wallace, who doesn't get a lot of at bats. Found a hole out there in right field. I thought maybe Judge was going to come out of center field and catch it. Yeah, it looked like Judge had it in his hand. And yeah, he just kind of pulled up, and uh, I don't think maybe the sun could have been an issue there, too, at the yeah. last second. You know, the way this field is built, it's a beautiful sta uh, stadium, but when that sun's setting, it, it's, it makes it hard on both teams. High chopper to third. Malik Williams throws. Oh, it's in the dirt and gets away. And Trey is going to go to second. He'll be safe. Wallace takes a big turn at third and goes back. So we talked about the errors hurting them and how that's going to affect the pitcher and just the extra pitches and the mental stress of of having to get five or six outs in an inning just really wears on a pitcher. And then you got the meat of the order up as well. So now yeah. you got to face another good hitter, you know, the, the number four hitter with two men on base instead of facing him next inning with the bases empty, you know? Yep, you're 100% correct. 
It's just and like it, Aiden probably has as much power as anybody on the team, so um, there's not a guy you want to mess with here. Two people on base. Second and third. <clears throat> Collins is hitting uh, 293 with seven RBIs. Got one home one home run <clears throat> on the year. Two outs in the inning. Velez's pitch count's got to be going up this inning. That's Chopper. That one's fouled off to left field. Again, you know, this is really dangerous with that sun out there. Some going up to center field can maybe not be seen, and all it takes is one drop, and there's going to be two more runners in. Collins in way out in front, both at bats, uh, which means early kind of weight getting forward and needs to stay back. Velez has thrown him a lot of off speed stuff and. Even the fastball he popped up, he was out in front, first at bat. There's a curveball, he hits hard to left center, that's over his head. That's extra bases. That's gonna be a two run double for Aiden Collins. And the Tigers start to open it up here. You know, when you look at a box score and people, if they say, oh, it's six to one, and this pitcher this, this pitcher that, but you know, really he was out of the inning. You know, it should, uh, it should have been two one when he went out. Yep. So that's uh, you know, four unearned runs now out of the six. Yep. And you still got a good bat coming up, Cam Banta, who hit it, hit the ball to right center that Judge made a nice catch on last time up. It looks like they're going to talk some things over. And like you said, you know, if you just look at the box score, you'll be like, what happened? But watching the game here, it's been some 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 hard hits and some bad drops that have kept this team kept the Paul Meadows in the position there and now. Yeah, if I'm Coach Rupp's probably out there to remind him of that. Look, you're you're doing fine. You know, you you should have been out of this. You got to forget that. Let's get one more out here and get out of this inning. And, um, yeah, you're 100 percent right. Trust I trust your defense next time. You can't stop trusting them, even though they've made errors in the past. There. Nope. You the same defense is going to come out for the rest of the game. You yeah. got to. Put that trust in him and, and, and keep throwing strikes. And he is throwing strikes. He's not walking people. No, he's not. He's he's doing his job. He's doing his job. There's been a couple of air uh, overthrown balls, a couple drops, and those mistakes add up and they add up on the point score. Yep. And here's Banta now with two outs and a runner in the scoring position. Another runner in the scoring position, Aiden Collins. There's a pass ball. That, that would not a wild pitch. That would be on the catcher there. And something like that. Now you have a man in third. Yeah, got a runner on third now. And Banta's ahead in the count, 1-0 with two outs. And it's outside. To the left. Hit down the left field line, out in front, foul. foul. <laughs> Two and one. Still a, what's considered a good hitter's count. He misses away with a breaking ball, so 3 1. A real good hitter's count, 3 and really 1. Really good. Hitters love three and one. Gives them a chance to, to they, relax. They just pick one. one spot out, and if it's there, I'm going to crush it. If it's anywhere else, I'll take it. And he does that, and that's it down for a base hit. That's two hard hit balls by Cam Banta, and they kick like that. He may end up on third. Overthrow the first cutoff man, and ooh. little shaky on that slide over there at Cam. That might explain why he's been hobbled with injuries all year, if that's how he slides. <laughs> Runs into the third baseman, he, uh, he, Williams' he leg. He barrels the ball, though. He, for, for three years, for three years I've seen him do that. Uh, on the replay. He gets a lot of barrels. Yeah. Kind of almost hitting Malik's knee yeah. there. Hey, I the was, it looked like his left arm got caught underneath him or something. Wasn't the most graceful slide, but it was effective. 
And once again, that's a hard hit ball, but it should have been a double. And, you know, the outfielders kicked it around, played it into a triple. It's a comeback or the pitcher and get the third out on Kretzer. And the Tigers are retired, but not before they uh, they get up to a 7-1 lead at the end of three innings. Or I think we're going to take a little break right here. And uh, we'll come back with some more action from Mike Van Zert Field on the campus of Palmetto High School. We're back at Mike Van Zirk Field at Palmetto High School. <clears throat> Hunter Wingate takes the hill for his third inning. He'll fake, face Malik Williams, third baseman for Bayshore. Will lead off the third for the Bruins. Got a breaking ball for a strike. Ground ball to short. Lawrence handles it easily, throws him out at first. Got one away, one pitch, one out. Coaches love to see the, the the one pitch, one out. I know Coach Little's loving that. Keep that pitch count down. Shows you're attacking the zone. Even it was a breaking ball, and he got it over the plate or close enough to get a swing out of it. There he started that one with a breaking ball. That's a ball. Umpire asked for help, and it was a ball. We're back to the top of the order here with uh, Jairo Leon. He walked and scored in the first. And is ahead in the count 2-0 here, showing a good eye. Ball three, which you want to get from your leadoff hitter. He's been patient up there and working the count, pitch count. And now he's got Hunter Wingate at 3-0. With one out, and as happy as Coach uh, Little was with that one pitch, one out, he's probably just as unhappy with the three and zero on the next batter. Three one fastball for a strike. The shadows starting to move out over the field a little bit. Another half hour, the right fielder and the first baseman won't have to worry about that sign anymore. Strike two. Leon thought it was up. He started to run to first. Three two for Wingate to Leon. He delivers. Base hit the left, line drive. Good at bat for Leon. So Leon gets on base again for the second time. Tucker Pope.
coming up now. The shortstop, sophomore for Bayshore Bruins. Oh, back up again. Last time getting himself a base hit. Wingate throws over to first. Pope's hitting 310. He's cooled off a little bit from the last time we saw him. I think he was around 370. He was really ripping the ball then. But still above 300. And Bayshore's got four or five guys hitting over 300. Their averages are coming around. Their offense has been a little better. Yeah. Again, you know, Bayshore team's younger. They're just trying to put the pieces together, and they have been. Laying down a good foundation for a brighter future. He saws them off, and they're going to have a double play. And there we go. And that's the inning. Double play. It was a little line drive to third to Clayton Williams, and the runner was going on the pitch, and he's over the first. Nice pick over there by Cam Banta, and we had double play. And the Tigers are out of the inning, and we go to the bottom of the third. Yeah, bottom Seven of the third. In and out for the Tigers in this one. Made Seven it quick. Seven to one, Tigers. I can't see the uh, bullpens from where we are, but I would think that might be it for Hunter Wingate. I'm only because the pitch count's been pretty high, and uh, I know he probably has other guys he'd like to get pitching to. And, but, yeah, I, I don't know if anyone's warming up down there, but I can't see either bullpen, actually. They're both out of view from here, so. From what I can see of the Tiger bullpen, I don't see anyone warming up. So, Well, you wouldn't be able to see them. They're behind that batting cage. Oh, okay. Never mind then. Yeah. I can't see anything. Yeah, we can't see it at all. It's totally out of our view. I, I just see I see some players walking back that way, and I think somebody's going to get warmed up. But, but who knows? We'll see. We'll find out uh, when they come back out. I wouldn't be shocked if that's it for him. He's done a good job for three innings, but – Said he hasn't been a starting pitcher. He hasn't gone a long distance very many times. So, yeah. And he did have a lot of pitches in that first inning. So yeah. that, this past inning was a quick one, though. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like know. you said before, you know, this game, they're trying to get a lot of guys in. They're trying to build depth. So there's no there's no rush to try to keep the guy in. You know, hey, right. let's let another man get some shine. Let another guy get some reps in. Especially if they get a few more runs here, and they're thinking, and you know, if they get four runs here, and it's eleven to one, and it might only be a you know a five inning game, then you know. Uh, you definitely want to get somebody else in and get some work. And so I wouldn't be shocked if somebody's getting ready down there. But but for Bayshore, it's still Vajegas on the mound, number 13 going. Uh, he said he's pitched fairly well. Seven runs really in, isn't really indicative of how he's performed. Uh, I think four of those seven are unearned. Maybe five. Five of those seven are unearned. Yep. Um, you know, that's tough. That's the toughest thing to do as a pitcher is to keep that focus and get that next guy out after an error. You know, he did it once yep. in the first inning. The second inning, he wasn't able to do it. Yep. You know, that when they made the error, it was then he continue, you know, gave up a hit after that, another hit. So. Yep. And, and again, like we stated earlier, you know, it, it was more so to do with the outfield and as that one's popped that's up popped in the air. popped up foul. Big Malik going over. He can't make the play. It's foul ball and new life for Clayton Williams. But, yeah, Vijayas has been very good on the mound in comparison to what the score may show. You know, you, and you just look at him now, the, uh, Vijayas out there on the mound kind of put his head down and shook his head. And it's like, you know, you make a pitch, you get a guy to pop it up in foul territory, and you got, you can't make the play. That's got to be so frustrating for a pitcher as it happens. You know, the more it happens, and it starts to just uh, snowball. Yeah, it can definitely become super frustrating as that one's popped Ooh, towards the second that one base. Right in the eye. Oh, wow. That ball hit him right in the face. I don't know. If, believe it or not, he might have lost it in the sun on a ground ball because it bounced up eye high. Yeah, definitely. So, ooh, this part of the game you don't want to see. That's going to be a shiner. Let's hope he's okay. That was, I, I mean, when he hit it, you know. He had it tracked and yeah, it, it he kind of right took there a weird and bounce. It kind of bounced up high. It wasn't moving that fast, but I think when it bounced up high, I think he lost it in the sun. Yeah. They're out looking at it. He's sitting up now. Looks like he's okay. I mean, you got to 
nowadays, though, you know, when a guy gets hit in the face, you got to remember, you know, concussion protocols and all that other stuff, too. Yeah. You know, even if it's not swollen or a cut, you know, sometimes they, they, you know, the trainers and the coaches and the umpires are going to make a decision, uh, yeah. you know, based on those concussion protocols, if there's any signs, any. And player safety, you know, and, and that's what I love about the game today. It's definitely gone up a lot. You know, yeah. you're saving a lot of guys' careers and – and, you know, people got to look at the big picture because most people aren't going to play baseball professionally. Right. You know, you don't want to be living with scars from baseball when you're going to your regular job. Yeah. Have we given some time here? We might go to a break. All righty, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a quick break here and we'll be right back with the MSTV Game of the Week. Well, we're back here at uh, Mike Van Zirk Field, and uh, the second baseman for Bayshore uh, was hit with a ground ball. He walked off on his own, so I think he's okay. I mean, we hope the best for him. It's Bryant Ortiz. Um, he walked off the field by himself. He looked okay, but like I said, with concussion protocols and, and a 7-1 to one game, you know, I don't think you're going to worry about uh, pushing it. you got to go get some ice on that thing. And, because I'm sure he's going to have, at the very least, a bad swollen eye or shiner. Yeah, you're 100% correct. I remember when I uh, had an encounter with a baseball, and let's just say my lip was swollen for a couple weeks. Donathan Sanchez, first pitch, he's attacking it out in front, hits a foul ball down to Coach DeHaan in the third base coach's box. So Clayton Williams is on second. And once again, Vijegas – not only does he get a pop foul, but he gets a ground ball, and it's a bad hop that hits the second baseman in the eye. So he, he's getting some tough breaks here. That ball's up, and the catcher was thinking about throwing down the second, but lost the handle on it. And that, that Looking at the first baseman the way he was looking at the catcher right with the sun, I think it's best not to throw down there right now because you may be putting up guy on third base if you throw into that sun. Yeah. Pop foul right back over our heads. On to 17th. Over to the fairgrounds. Over to the Bentley. Back by your Bentley. Yeah, and like you stated earlier, Vijay has, has been, his pitching has been great. It's a lot of bad breaks for him, and I do commend him for being so resilient as that one's hit towards him. It looks like it's going to be easy. Yeah, he was off the end of the bat, a little slow roller back to the pitcher. Couldn't get two on it, so he just went to one. That was a smart play. Got the out. Coming out to that. Talon Sisk up, the number nine hitter. We've got Peters on deck. Like a little delay going on, but we're back into it. Sisk, who last time got himself on base, uh, I believe a, a single. And then got himself I, a stolen base as well. I can't remember if he – I thought I think he walked. I'm not sure, but – I'm not sure. It? Off the top of my – I know he made base, and he, I, got, he got himself first, a stolen yeah. one right after. And we got one out, uh, one strike. Breaking ball for a strike. Oh, yes, it was a strike. Okay, he's – the delay, the delay sometimes, I can't tell whether he's calling it a ball or a strike. It, it, I was thinking it had to be a strike. It looked really good from here. Ooh, that's another pitch that was close. I know that Bayshore catcher thought that that was a strike. I might be inclined to agree from our, from our view, which is not perfect, but that one's in. It was two and two with one out. 
for assists. Top of the order on deck, Jaden Peters, who already has two hits, two hard hit balls. Clayton Williams with the lead at second with one out. And a strike three. So we'll see if Peters will see if he can go three for three and get the two out RBI hit here with a runner in scoring position. Peters having himself a phenomenal game so far. I think he's another another kid who will, I believe is in the ACE program. He's only a junior though, so he will not does not have his diploma yet, but I think he will get an ACE diploma. That one thrown high, be a 1-0 count. I love the addition of new college to the area. You know, they're really a lot of they're getting a lot of local kids. It's yeah, it's another you. option for kids, uh, and it's NAIA, which is great. I'm glad when they when they started it, and Coach Amendes told me they were going to go NAIA. I was so happy that they were going to do that because it's another level of baseball. Everyone fell back to the fairgrounds. Two strikes now on Peters. Um, you know, there are already D1 schools. There's D2s. There's, uh, you know, we, but NEIA, there's not, nothing in this immediate area. You'd have to go over to Weber or, you know, Polk County to find NEIA school. So I thought it was great, great planning on their part to go NEIA and uh, gives them the ability to give, you know, give scholarship money and a little more flexibility. That's down. It definitely an amazing plan. 2-2 two, two count. With two outs and one man on second. Palmetto not moving the needle so far on the points. Breaking ball. He's out in front and ripped that down the left field line. Blake Willis is going after it. Normally the starting second baseman, not playing tonight. Blake's dad, Ryan, uh, played on the last state championship team here at Palmetto, and he's also a partner with uh, Coach DeHaan in the hit lab and coaches uh, some travel ball. Full count here. Three and two to Peters. Vajegas still in. His pitch count's getting up there. Oh, strike three. Called strike three. Looked like it might have been away. Jaden thought Peters thought it was away. Uh, the Jagas got the call. Got out of the inning with no runs. Still 7-1. to one. Palmetto 7. Bayshore 1 after 4. Yeah. We've been told we think there's a new pitcher coming in. Looks like Ben Capel. Mr. Ben Capel coming in to pitch for the Tigers. Another big young kid. And surprisingly, the Tigers didn't put any points on the board in that one. No, oh, Vajegas, he's done a good job. He's, played, he's pitched well. He's got to get high, be getting pretty high in a pitch count right now. So. Yep. But he's done a good job of being resilient, holding on, keeping, yep. doing his part. He's definitely been handling his part. The defense has had a couple slip-ups here and there, but if they can uh, continue to on this path here, they might be able to catch up and just need to see some offensive work now. Well, Hunter Wingate exits after three. Um, gives up one run in the first. It was a little shaky that first inning. Looked good after that. Now Ben Capel or Capel Capel, I don't know how to pronounce it right. I think Capel comes in to pitch and uh, he has not had a lot of work this year. Um, he's pitched effectively when he has pitched in the past for the, for the Bruins and I mean for the Tigers. JV and var uh, the last two years he's one and zero in varsity. He's had five appearances, so he's got he's got little work. But he's only thrown seven innings.
He's a he's a big kid. Mm -hmm. Definitely a probably. Uh, he probably came into Palmetto High School about 5'10". He's probably 6'2 now. So I've kind of seen him grow up a little bit in the last two years, last three years. Yeah, say he's about 6'2 on paper. So his first one, and that's going to be popped, popped up, up in the in air. Popped up in the infield. And Trey Lawrence is going to take charge like the shortstop should. You can see as soon as, you know, the third baseman, the second baseman, the pitcher all look up at it, but you really want your shortstop coming in and making that play. The shortstop is the the quarterback of the infield, center fielder that does that in the outfield. They, they work a lot in baseball practices on pop-up priorities. And as soon as the third baseman and the pitcher hear that shortstop call it, they get away from it and let him handle it, and you got one pitch, one out. Good pitch, breaking ball. And that just shows how well this, this team is coached because that's a part of the game that some teams can't deal with and you get mistakes. And We've, we've seen it in we've games seen it where, yeah, where there's uh, that Braden River game we did. communication problems, yeah. Mm -hmm. Which reminds me, our next game will be uh, Palmetto and Braden River. Yeah. Palmetto at Braden River next week. Yeah, there's I believe there's two because there's one on – and then there's Monday, the, yeah, Manatee and Parish at Lecom. Yep. Looking forward to those games. We're going to be at the Pirates, the Marauders Stadium, rather. Pirates as well for spring. Pirates for spring. Marauders for the summer. I still call it McKetney Field because that's what it was for my whole life. So it is Lecom. No, oh, strike three. That's what baseball people call a sword. Mm. You'll probably hear, you know, might, if you go around the baseball parks, you might hear someone yell sword. And that's what they're talking about. A little check swing and uh, kind of left the bat out there. Not really sure he wanted to swing at that one. He was fooled by that pitch. Good pitch by Capel. Ben's look good so far. Filling up the strike zone. Jaden Judge, the batter for Bayshore now. He's got to walk off uh, Grand Slam early, earlier in the year, so he's got a little pop. And we know he can run. Swings the bat with authority. Again, star, star running back, so he has the legs. He's able to drive into the ball, turn his hips well, weight lifting. Yep. Very good mechanics of the body. Yeah, he's fast twitch. He's an explosive athlete. Guy you got to watch out for. That was about a 52-foot breaking ball there. 52 and a half, John Kretzer says. Took a bounce up over the umpire's head, bounced up over everything. About eight feet out in front of the plate. That's when you know the pitcher's trying to keep it down. <laughs> <laughs> That's ground ball in a hole to... Trey Lawrence. Oh, what a play. He's safe. I think he was off the bag. Probably any other Bruin, he's probably he can take his time and throw that, but that's a great play by Trey Lawrence going to his right. And Banton, first base, stretching out. I couldn't see if he came off the bag or if he just beat it. I think he just beat it. His foot was on the bag. But was not hit catch. hard. It was a good pitch by Capel. Got in on his hands. Was not hit hard. Clayton Williams dove from third. Couldn't get it. Trey Lawrence was charging, going to his right, threw it all in one motion, underhand throw, made a big-time play, but just couldn't get him. The little brother coming in now. Yeah. Jashon's judge. Jaden on first. I, I don't I, I don't think they're going to run down 7-1. They may. Uh, if they were going to run, he would be a likely candidate, but he doesn't have a very big lead. As a chopper, I'm gonna let that go foul, foul ball. The Bruins starting this off right. Two outs, two outs for Capel here. 
Runner on first, two away. Judge aboard on an infield single. Judge at the plate. With an 0-2 count. If you were going to run, this might be a good time. Or and a good thing the sun's gone down. That's yeah, help from this out point everyone. on, the sun will not be a factor as the lights start to take hold, which is good. There's strike three on a ball in the dirt. Kretzer blocks it and throws him out at first. As Judge hustles down the line, great hustle by Judge, making it close, making it a tough play. But nice pitching by Capel comes in out of the pen and uh, gets a couple of strikeouts and a pop-up and a little infield single that wasn't hit very hard. That's a pretty good job there. Yeah. Holding the Bruins at one run as we go to the bottom of the fourth. It's Palmetto 7, Bayshore 1. Yeah. <clears throat> Looks like we're going to see a pitching change for Bayshore as well. I believe. Vijegas is headed out to the infield. And yes, we have a new pitcher coming in. Looks like Jack Rector. Number 10, Jack Rector, a sophomore, right hander. Got a couple of the MSTV crew jamming out to this amazing soundtrack that they're keeping here at Mike Van Zerk Field. I want to give a big shout out to everyone in the who helped put this production together. Shout out to all the MSTV crew and all the volunteer students who were brought to us by the radio and TV production teacher. Mr. Here Garner. Mr. 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 Garner. Garner, Mr. Garner. Garner. Um, TV production teacher here at, at Palmetto and out here with his students tonight so those got, kids can get some practical experience and see how a, a live production is done. Rector, a tall, lanky right-hander, 10th grader. I believe it was the first time we seen of him. I didn't see him. No, I don't, I don't remember him pitching last time. I, I think he got in later in the game in the outfield, but I don't remember him pitching. Nope. Um, He's thrown 3.2 innings this year. He's struggled a little bit. He's given up six earned runs. He's got three Ks and six walks. So he struggled with his control a little bit. His ERA is 11 right now, which is not good. But when you've only pitched a couple innings, that's easy for that to be real high, and that can change. But uh, Leading off the bottom of the fourth, number eight, Baden-Wallace. Baden-Wallace hitting in the two-hole. and We're going to see a, a sub coming in there. It looks like Blake Willis is going to be coming in off the bench. He's on deck right now. So he might take Trey Lawrence out, the SEC signee, Trey Lawrence. Oh, there's a ball hit hard to right by Baden Wallace in the gap. <clears throat> One hops defense. And it's going to be a double. <coughs> they got some big fences out there in Palmetto. Yeah, the fence here is shorter than most of the other fields in the county, but really, you don't see a lot of home runs, uh, as many home runs here as you would think you would. And part of that is the high, the high fence, I think. But. So Blake Willis is batting here, uh, coming off the bench. He's normally a starter. Baden Wallace, uh, I think he's uh, got two hits now and a bunt sacrifice. He's two for two. There's a base hit for Blake. Wallace had to correctly hold up to see if the ball got through. When a ball's hit in front of you at second base, you got to see it through, which he did. That was good base running. Um, in case that third baseman feels it, you don't want to run into an easy tag over there. He doesn't have to make a throw. So that was good base running there. He held up. And, and we have another sub coming in now, Chance Schopacher coming in. He was a courtesy runner, but he can still come in the game. He ran for the catcher earlier. Blake Willis will... Might be running here at first, I would think. First and third is a possibility. We got nobody out. Got Cam Banta on deck, who's hit uh, nothing but barrel balls up today. 
foul ball. Ooh, right off the catcher. And the umpire will walk the ball out to the pitcher. That's baseball courtesy. Same thing when an umpire gets hit with a foul ball. You'll hear the coaches say, walk it out. They want the catcher to walk the ball out to the pitcher instead of throw it to him just to give that guy a little, a little extra, extra time, time to, recover, to yeah. get their wits about him after they take one in the, the head or the throat or wherever it hit him. Ooh. That's a slow roller. They're going to go home with it. Wallace slides, and he's going to be out. The That's a good play by uh, Malik down there at third. Malik Williams. Ball was kind of hit off the end of the bat. Well, I don't know if it was the end of the handle, but it came off kind of knuckling slow, and he made a good throw home, and they made a good tag, and got the runner at the plate. Yeah, even though the, the Bruins were a little slow on that one, again, a great play by Malik. Gets it there just in time. Yep. And they're able to stop Palmetto from advancing the score. So it's first and second with one out. Cam Banta, the hitter. He's hit the ball hard twice. Oh, and he gets plunked in the back. We got low, bases loaded for Christian Kretzer. The first time we're seeing that all game. Bases loaded, one out. Yeah, bases loaded, one out. This is a good chance for the catcher for uh, Palmetto tonight. Kretzer has done a great job behind the plate, blocking balls, a couple of third. Uh, third strike, breaking balls in the dirt that he blocked, kept in front of him and threw the guy out at first. And then we had the, th had the throw out on the uh, strike him out, throw him out, double play, doing a good job back there. One out, bases loaded to Kretzer. There's a line drive to short hop by the shortstop. He's not out, he has, he's, he, he's not out that guy. He's walking off the base. No, he's already out. Banta's already out. Schaupacher is not out. No, Schaupacher's not out. He's got to stay on second. He can't leave. 16 is out. The ball was not caught. No. There's no there, Why are you running now? They're, they're, that's a double play. Now it's a double play. Why did he run? He, yeah, the time was out. The time was called by the umpire. This is this. The umpires are a little confused here. We're gonna have some discussion over this one. The ball was not caught by the shortstop, so it was nothing more than a force out at second. So Banta was out. Schaupacher should have stayed on second. When he ran just now, time had been called. So I don't understand. That should not even be an out. Palmetto should still be batting. And they can't get it figured. The umpires don't know what's going on. The run scored on the ground out. Okay. Oh, no, they're bringing him back out. Bringing him back they're out. Back yeah, out. it was a dead ball. Yep. Oh, <laughs> Palmetto needs to go back in and still bat. I just had this feeling uh, tonight that we would have something crazy happen with the officiating. Yeah. Well, it 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 looks like they're going over there to tell them. I they they've got to put Palmetto back up the plate. Uh, I don't understand what they're doing here. That's that's really poor officiating. Um, unless they called the ball caught, which it was not, it obviously bounced before the shortstop fielded it. The only out they got was the force at second. There was only one out on the play. Then time was called by the umpire when he was explaining it, and Schaupacher tried to run to third for some reason, and they threw him out at third. Wow. Well, it seems like the Bruins will be, uh, this will be out. So that run should, should be disappeared. Why isn't Corey saying something? I'm confused what happened. 
So it looks like from our vantage that the ball bounced. It was caught by the shortstop. Who would have got the second and out at second as a forced out. However, due to some confusion, the, the hitter, the first baseman would have been out. And then the man on second ran the third and got tagged out as well. Which would end the inning. And that would bring Palmetto. The lead should be the score should be one seven. Yeah, I'm not sure if the run counts. I think you have to check with the umpire to see if they ruled it a four, a double play on the line out, then a run would not count. If it was a ground ball and he came in and it wasn't a force, he was tagged at third, then the run counts. Okay. So I don't know what the uh, what that run. I, they may put Palmetto back up the plate here. I don't know what's going on. It's. No, oh, looks looks like the Bruins are are getting ready to hit. So we're going into the top of the fifth. Seven. How do I go down? Now? How I, that's that can't. I got you. That can't be. Uh, that run can't knock. I mean, I don't, I don't understand that. It's, are they saying the shortstop caught the ball? If so, that's a <laughs> horribly incorrect call. Mm -hmm. There was a large cloud of dust popped up. He short hopped it. And, and nobody signaled catch when he caught it. So I, I have no idea what the, the officials ruled there. I think it was just that the easiest thing to do was just leave the leave the uh, Palmetto Tigers out in the field when they came out. They probably should have waited until the umpires had it sorted out instead of trying to run to third. So Capel comes Zero. back out for the Tigers to pitch the uh, fifth. And just a heads up, ladies and gentlemen at home, I know our, our broadcast says 1-8, but the score is 1-7 due to that double play. That last run did not count. Yeah. It, well, legal, uh, by rule book it should. So I don't know where they're getting that it doesn't count because it wasn't a force for him to run to third. The out was already made at second. Mm -hmm. So he could have stayed at second. So it's not a force. The run should have counted. <clears throat> But everything about that whole play was called incorrectly. Mm. Yep, yeah, just a little bit of rule knowledge is a dangerous thing. There's a fly ball to center right at Wallace. Takes about two steps in, makes a catch, one away. Been impressed with Capel's pitching. He's around his own. Uh, he's not giving up hard contact yet. No, nothing on the barrel. Yep. That was a little fly ball off the end of the bat there. Brings up uh, Jataris Handy for the Bruins. And Capel will face Handy here with one out. Nobody on in the top of the fifth. There's a end of the bat foul ball. Over into the parking lot, first base side. That's behind Handy there. That's, that's one that got away from him. Like a breaking ball that didn't break. One on one. Oh, good fastball right by him. It's a Louisiana fastball there. It's by you. <laughs> that old chocolate mousse looks good. Breaking ball hit foul down the left field line. So it's one and two with one out, nobody on. Capel throwing for the Tigers. Facing Jatara's handy, left fielder tonight. 
Also plays some first base in the previous game we've seen him. Capel delivers. Popped up. Right side. Right fielder's coming in. Second baseman calls it. Takes it. Good defense out there by the Tigers. Great communication. Every play, there's never been confusion. Everyone's running towards the ball. Yeah, even in, in you so as a casual baseball fan, you can see a difference where everybody's moving to the boards. Well, some team games will do where a ball is hit and some guys tend to, tend to be Staring spectators. In space or, spectators, yeah. yeah. Ball watching. There's something to do for everybody on every play. And there's a first pitch to Malik Williams as a strike from Capel. He's, once again, filling the zone up, getting a lot of pop-ups and weak ground balls and not a lot of solid contact yet. He's looked really good tonight against the Bruins since he came in. Breaking ball, strike, swing and a miss. Good pitch. He's got him 0-2 here. I think he can pretty much do whatever he wants here. He can go high fastball up or he can go breaking ball away. It looks like Kretzer's setting up outside. That's what he does, strike three. And that's three away. The Bruins finish there, fifth frame. Down 7-1 to to the Palmetto Tigers. We're at that point of the game now where if Palmetto can get four runs, uh, this game's over. Yeah, the they'll be taking it home early. So. Yeah, uh, after that fiasco of the last inning, the, Palm, the Tigers make quick work of the Bruins in this inning and look to maybe take it home a little early here, depending on. Well, they, they have a chance here at 7-1, going into the fifth, bottom of the fifth here. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Okay. Said that the, the pitcher out there throwing at the second baseman in a high school game. Usually you have an extra player run out there and warm the pitcher up if uh, <laughs> if the catcher's not ready. It's a new game, you know. You got to stop living in the past. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the past. That's the present. <laughs> yeah. Just probably a, a, the fact that they just don't have the numbers to have an extra player to go do that possibly. Yeah, that's one thing that um, hasn't really been talked about. But Paul Meadow almost has like double the size of team in comparison to Bayshore. And, and again, you, I keep saying this because it's important. Bayshore is a program that's just now starting to find their building, strengths. Yeah, yeah it's, and he knows he's rebuilding, and they know it. Um, and, you know, and I, I'm, I'm impressed that he scheduled this game, to be honest with you. Um, yeah. Bayshore teams of the past would probably would not play Palmetto. I think, you know, one of the things is, too, you know, especially coming from the, the college circuit for games, you got to schedule your team the hard teams because that's the only way you get better. And, and not only that, when you're building a program, the th little things you've noticed about Palmetto, he wants those kids, to see, his kids at Bayshore to see that. Yep. This is what, you know, an established program does. Yep. And when you yeah. go into the film room, you can say, hey, look at how they're doing this. You take the greatness. You add that to your team, now you're at the level of Paul Meadow. When I was coaching baseball at Manatee and first pitch is a strike to Clayton Williams, um, and we had some teams come in for classics sometimes from out of the area, and I, I actually heard the coaches t talking to the kids one time saying, look around you, this is what our program needs to be like. This is what we need to do, you know, build something like this. So and That's 100% right. You know, you want, as a player, you want guys to be playing up to the next level. You don't want to be playing – Lower. You want to be playing at a higher level every time you play. And that Ground ball to second. One out. As it gets darker now, the uh, speakers and the lights in the speakers out in left field is starting to take hold. So if you need to find out where to get your tacos from the Sanchez family, that's uh, that's where you head. They're there and they've been there all game. Loyal so supporters. They're there every game. Yep. Love to see it. And this is Donnie Sanchez. As we speak about the Sanchez family, come up to the bat right now. Curveball for a strike. Rector not quite the velocity that uh, Vijegas had. A few more breaking balls. There's another good breaking ball. Gets a slow roller to second. Should be an easy play. It's a good hustle by Sanchez getting down the line. 
That's interesting two away. Enough. So we were looking, talking about four runs and getting out of here early, and uh, looks like they're going to have a chance for a one, two, three inning here. Maybe Palmetto wants to make sure their pitchers get some work in. So, yeah, interesting enough, you know, although we saw Palmetto explode for that that uh, that second inning, the rest of the game has been somewhat quiet. Yeah, and they were majority of those were unearned runs. They yeah. could have been over if uh, uh, Malik Williams gets a throw up over the first with two outs, and that kept the inning going. And there was a couple of big hits after that, and mm. Talon Sisk is hit in the back. Second pitcher that. He'll go down to first. That rector yeah. is hit tonight. Yeah, he hit uh, Cam Banta. I mentioned the rector didn't have quite the velocity that Vajegas had, so that's if you are going to get hit, that's the guy you want to hit you, somebody who's not a 90-mile-an-hour fastball guy. <laughs> yeah. Make putting on your shirt hard for the next couple days. It's Jaden Peters up. Oh, foul ball straight back. He was uh, he had a good cut at that. He was right on it, fouled it straight back. Just under the ball of hair. Bain Wallace waits on deck. He's got two hits tonight and a sacrifice bunt. And the stolen bases is slowing down as well. From the yeah, Tigers. I'm surprised Palmetto's not running. Maybe that's a, a product of being up by six and Coach... DeHaan feeling they don't need to run. That's hit hard. Deep right center field. Judge is going back. Off his glove. It was a tough play. Went off his glove. Sis is going to come around to score. Jaden Peters goes into second with a, with a double. And they're going to hold it there. <laughs> I say double. I'm, I'm assuming it wouldn't be ruled an error. It was uh, might have been catchable, but he was getting close to the fence and it had a long run to get to it. He's playing really shallow. Went a long way to get to it, but would have been a real tough play. I'm not the official scorer. I'd probably go ahead and give him the double on that. Yeah, yeah, definitely <laughs> give him the double on that one. Bain Walls gets a chance to get another RBI here. There it is, base hit. He gets his third hit and drives in another run. They've been killing the center field as that one's thrown. A lot of air on it. They're going to fire it back to second. Yep. That's good base running by Baden. He took a big turn at first, and uh, you know the first baseman is the cutoff man, so there's no one, no what, no threat to get picked off at first there. And he saw the throw going high into home over the first cutoff man's head, and he took the extra base. So now instead of a man on first, you got a guy in scoring position with two outs, and and that he did keeps the inning alive. And speaking about those two, the four runs, you know, in quick succession, two on the board. Yep, with another man in scoring position, and Blake Willis up. He was single last time in his first at-bat when he came off the bench. That one thrown behind him. Well, that's he's hit two guys in the back, and that one went behind him. Could have been another back. As a hitter, you know, they say, you know, you're supposed to turn away from the ball because that one's popped up. What do you – is it? Are you trying to draw the hit? Are you trying not to? No, you just want to protect your face. I mean, if you okay. turn towards it, uh, you know, you want to turn away. If it does hit you, you want to get hit. You want to get hit in the back, not in your hands yeah. where the small bones are, your face. You know, those are the ones that, that really hurt you. You get plunked in the back, it's usually a bruise, you know, red mark on your back. And it's, you know, not something that's going to take you out of the lineup, though. Yeah. You turn into the ball with your hands and your face. And, you know, I saw the Ray, in the Rays game the other night. Um, one of the Rangers guys check swing and broke his wrist um, on a check swing when the ball hit his wrist. So those are things that take you out of the, take you out of the lineup for, you know, in, in pro ball at six weeks, but in high school, that's the whole season pretty much. So yeah. you know, if you get a six week injury, you're done. So if you're a senior, you, you know, you take a foul ball or take a pitch off your knuckle and break a finger, your season's probably done. So yeah, always, you always want to turn away. That's balls down and away. Three, one count. Yeah, you're hundred percent right. Six weeks in, in high school, and, and especially for recruitment and development, you can't afford to miss a season. Yeah, it, that's that's big. 3-1 yeah, count to Willis. Ball four, curveball away. And that's going to bring up Shawpocker. 
who was in the center of that crazy play we had to end the inning where he didn't run, went back to second, and then while everybody was talking, took off for third and got thrown out at third. Yep. Two outs, first and second. That's hit hard. That's going to go foul, though, down the left field line, just out in front. Hard, he's, a, he's a hard worker, shot pucker. I see him and uh, Blake Willis and many a nights in the hit lab after our 12U team, my son's 12U team practices, mm -hmm. and they're over in the other cage practicing, getting extra BP for hours at end. Uh, that's two two kids that work really hard. He got hit in the back. Another one. <laughs> Another, and that's going to load up the bases. I think sometimes he, Rector really relies on that curveball, and sometimes it doesn't curve and just hits guys in the back. It's going to bring up Cam Banta, who was hit in the back last time. And two at-bats previous to that, he barreled up balls. So I think Palmetto likes this, this look here with the bases loaded and two outs and having him up there. So, again, bases loaded for Palmetto. Two people in scoring position. This could be the one to take it home. Fastball high. <clears throat> pitcher, how, how, as a pitcher, how important is strength, or is it mostly all technique? Uh, it's Strength is important, but the strength doesn't be here. There's a shot, base hit. That could be the game. That could be a walk-off right there. Here comes Willis. Judge has got to try to throw home, and that's it. That's the ball game as Blake Willis scores. And Palmetto goes on to win 11-1. to There it is, ladies and gentlemen. And that is our game, ladies and gentlemen, from Mike Van Zirk Field. Mike Van Zirk Field. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a great game on both ends. The Bruins scoring one. The Tigers closing it out, scoring 11, getting mercy ruled here. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to thank you for joining us on the MSTV Game of the Week broadcast, brought to you by Manatee Schools Television. I have been Fred, the people's champ. Our play-by-play -play has been Mr. Chris Conboy, and we shall see you next week. Y'all have a great night.